Man, I wish someone would caress my balls like that. Dun 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 Episode 7 really was something else. The show has never failed to present themselves how creative they can be with the color palettes, visual style, wanting to chew some dick. But I'ma keep my overall thoughts for Dun 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 on my other video since you guys want this episode breakdown more. I thought I was gonna chill for a bit on vids since I've been on a streak. An edging streak? But this episode came out of nowhere. Not really. I know from the preview and stuff list that it's gonna be a standout. But to this degree, it was unexpected. Shuto Inamoto did the storyboards. Animation directed this episode. And it was directed by Kotaro Matsunaga. Inamoto was the backbone of the episode. He did a lot. Not only he did the storyboards, he animation directed slash supervised the drawings this episode. And of course, animating some parts. It's not far-fetched to say he supervised the entire episode since he was the only person credited as animation director. And Hana Okutani as assistant animation director with no chief animation director credits anywhere to be seen, which is surprising since Dandadan's credits can look a bit worrying with the amount of ADs and chief ADs it can have. Another aspect that's very impressive is Enomoto was credited as sub-character designer and clothing design. I'll be honest, I don't know what clothing design means, but he seemingly did the original design for this episode. That's why the design slash style is different compared to the other episodes. The line art is thicker. It also helps the fact that Donadon's style, at least for the colors of the characters, it feels less process in a way. So the line art definitely stand out more than the colors that don't feel overpowering. Like example is Sakamoto Days. I don't know what the fuck they did. Either it's compositing filters or or what, but the colors look a bit too vibrant in a way. This is Yuto Inamoto's first time storyboarding. It's clear he was an incredible animator and artist, but putting him as the storyboarder for episode 7 of Don Da Don, it was a work of art. The storyboards, shot composition, transition, visual storytelling, it feels very heavenly delusion since Enomoto was very involved with that project. You can feel some similarities in this episode with like this scene kind of feels like a more touch or another way i can put it it feels like a kai ikurashi episode but it still feels like a dandadan episode with the style or strong heavy color palettes it uses because moko-chan is still assistant directing for the episode i gave enough praises for enomoto now to the episode well i'll still glaze enomoto for the duration of this video we start off with this incredible pov shot i still don't know if this is a 3d space or real we saw the same thing in episode 4 but that was apparent that it was a 3d background or if one example of a live action one it's with the recent monogatari season here i don't know it is like stop motion-y and the ground doesn't look real with how it's textured i'm gonna guess it's a 3d space Still incredible. The whole chase scene is amazing. Really utilize the background and makes you immersed with the environment. With the camera tracking Okarun or just showing the background more with the camera movement. And most of it is an illustrated background, meaning it stays the same drawing for the scenes beside the stuff that comes in contact or gets destroyed with Acrobatic Silky. With this railing, this box, this other box, this wall and some more. Also, everything is flat, the background, characters, so you have to give that illusion of death more so with the character moving closer to the camera or farther to the camera. The animation itself, how bouncy or nimble Okarun moves compared to like how Momo moves. And guys, the monster is hand-drawn? What? Usually most of the monsters or yokais are CG besides Turbo Baba or the alien's fake appearances. I think the CG is okay, but the way they composited it and using bold color palettes signifying the individual monsters definitely helped to mix it with everything. Acrobatic Silky is a very detailed monster to draw, but Enomoto, who supervised this episode, make the design more detailed with the line count, folds, the bumps, or just the understanding of the anatomy is crazy. And the hair animation is great too. I already said the drawing quality this episode has its own style, how volumetric it is, and is consistent through the episode. The storyboards are great. Again, really use the environment in the chase, and this change of speed, like showing 
showing close-up shots, then boom, explosion or something. This awkward morphine sequence is one of my favorite cuts this episode. Just how smooth it transitions to his other form, with his hair slowly changing with multiple colors, or his clothing moves like water. And I love this monotone coloring style when Momo was reaching for their hearts. I want to put most of my talking points or praises to the flashback, since this is when Enomoto really showed his talent as a storyboarder artist or just an understanding of using this medium to its fullest. The theme that's mostly present in this flashback or even in the beginning of the episode is visual storytelling. I don't read the manga but Enomoto is trying to give more immersion to the scenes, give you more intact to the characters or just more meaning to other scenes. There's barely any dialogue speaking this whole flashback besides some scenes. It's through audio, music, character movements, color palettes signifying different emotions. It's not just giving movements to certain panels, it's elevating it with the stuff available in anime. It's what makes these two mediums different. You have Kensuke Ushio's soundtrack playing in the background that makes so well with everything happening. How the OST slowly sounds distorted because she's doubting or blaming herself to everything that happened with her daughter. It's not just because Kensuke Ushio's soundtrack is amazing, but also the work of the episode director. Kotaro Matsunaga really plays these soundtracks at the perfect time. Although Enomoto was the one that built the aesthetic for this episode, it's not denying Matsunaga played his part perfectly, translating Enomoto's vision in this episode. Also, he did some work in Love Life. The go. Again, most of the episode communicates through the visuals and sound, especially in the flashbacks. How this subtle shot of Acrobatic Silky standing on her tippy toes has a more deeper meaning in the end. How the sound of the shower, a glimpse of her being naked in bed, and the money clarifies to the viewer that she's a prostitute. Or how Acrobatic Silky was high up with the light circles things or the city being lower leveled than her. It's the same thing what Kinuyasu Nishina did with his or her episodes in Oshinoko. You don't have to tell us with every scene like, oh my god, I want to buy that dress for my daughter. The boards with the seamless transitions and great framing work. The compositing too, how warm the scene looks when everything goes great. Even in a darker setting, how the light shines with these two. And the other side with a sense of guilt or desperation to provide for your child. The scene where the mom got beat up by the debt collectors. I don't know if debt collectors also steals people's children, I don't know, was amazing but tragic at the same time. The screeching scream from the kid really grips you on how disturbing this scene is, with even the rain slowly starts to sound louder. Then we get the full context of this POV shot we saw in the beginning. This whole sequence of her on top of the building is beautiful. The staff, especially the composing team, never disappoint us in the show in terms of photography, but this scene takes the cake. How the starry blue night sky reflects to the floor, making this whole sequence just feels beautiful, yet unnerving with the soundtrack playing. I haven't even said anything about the animation for the flashback. Again, Enomoto corrected most of the movement and drawings from what it seems. How three-dimensional everything is, like this shot of the daughter with her mouth, and the teeth animated by Kana Ito. The movement slash character acting signifies so much. How happy it can be. A good example is Silky's daughter dancing immaturely that she's a kid and doesn't know how to ballet dance yet. Just the subtle stumbling is great. How unsettling it can be or how beautiful in a lot of ways. A great adaptation is not just giving movement to make sense from panel to panel, it's what you utilize in this space. How you can exceed from already a great manga slash story to translate that to a medium that provides you with more tools than manga. It's how you tell a story from animation and audiovisuals. You think because they didn't adapt Silky jumping off of a building one to one is bad? No, it's giving more context of what is precious or important to her. Ballet dancing was her image even as a spirit because it was something that was important to her. With the daughter learning ballet through Silky, the moments that made her happy, putting everything just for a dress or shoes, although things just didn't end what she wanted it to be. And the last act that she did was the thing that can make her remember the moments that she can cherish. But in the end, it seemingly didn't matter. It's how you present those aspects in a story, and it's how the climax hits you so hard even though it's something so insignificant, but it means so much and giving her more closure that everything 
was not her fault. We get more context of the Arya and the spirit flashback on why everything is white and so transparent. It's because she died and Aira can see her. The last scene animated by Kana Ito was again beautiful and the boards provided by Enomoto was fantastic. The seamless transitions, music, lighting, drawing quality, and this kind of acrobatic Silky's hand, the volume control, and how it slightly hesitated for a second is amazing in a lot of ways. I can't thank Enomoto, Matsunaga, and the stuff behind this episode. I can't put all my thoughts in this video because I don't want to make it long because again i have been on a streak an edging streak i don't know when the dandan Dan video will come out maybe in a few weeks but if you guys like this video leave a like if you hate it leave a like comment down below what your thoughts about this episode of dandan Dan. and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video see you guys next time